Oh, through for Henri. What a moment! Remember when Thierry Henry made his return to Arsenal on loan and scored this goal? Do you remember who set that up? Well, it was the same man that said, quote, I met Barca's sporting director and he told me I would not get to play many games, but I didn't give a f I knew that now I would become a millionaire. That quote is now a bit infamous when people think of Alex Song and stings a bit for Arsenal supporters. When you look up the talented Cameroonian, unfortunately, you read more about his money problems in London or how he didn't care about playing at Barcelona than how he was brilliant, absolutely brilliant for Arsenal in his final two seasons with the club. The title of this video sounds harsh at first, but he admitted as much himself, and unfortunately, he'd never come close to reaching those Arsenal heights again. He did indeed use some of that money to give back to his country, so it is at least overall a net positive. But back in football, he was building a habit of being a clutch player for Arsenal at the time. Someone who helped to fill the void that Fabregas had left behind. Someone who could play that line-breaking ball to set up a winner for his side, as he did a few times. In fact, he set up a few winners for Robin Van Persie, who left in the same summer as Song, also for far less than he should have. From his deep-lying position in midfield, when you watched Song, you saw the game unfolding. His performances against Dortmund and AC Milan in the Champions League that season, the 11-12 season, were particularly stunning. Alongside Arteta, Alex Song was Arsenal's most used midfielder during the 2011-12 season, a season that would be his last with the club, and also the height of his career. He would win titles elsewhere, but his impact was almost non-existent, and unfortunately for him, rather than be remembered for what he did on the pitch, he's now a card-carrying member of the What Could Have Been Club. Hey, I'm Adrian, and welcome to Rabona TV. and if you find yourself enjoying this video, then do subscribe for more explainers on players and topics from the past, the present, and the future. But before we begin, a quick check-in on Adrian's Eclectic Kit Collection, and now, you can get some for yourself for cheap. This lovely Dynamos FC football kit from Zimbabwe was sent to me by the good people at Sangalo. Sangalo is not your average online kit shop. They sell all kinds of unique kits from around the world with the purpose of providing both accessibility to fans around the world, as well as exposure to football markets that don't get much love globally. And they are having an incredible sale from now until the end of December, so use the link in the description. You can get this kit for 30% off, but deals go from 20% to 40% off depending on who you buy. So again, use the link in the description to access the sale. Thank you, Sangalo, for this beautiful kit and for sponsoring this video. As always, the sources are in the description. Yeah. Alex Song left Douala, Cameroon at just 16 years of age to pursue his footballing dream in Paris, France, though he made his breakthrough at SC Bastia, a Corsican club. In his first professional season as a 17-year-old, the 2004-2005 season, Song made 35 appearances for Bastia, becoming a starter under manager Francois Ciccolini. Song was undoubtedly a bright spot in a dark season for Bastia, as they were relegated to Ligue 2. At this time, Arsene Wenger was looking to sign the best and brightest young talents to follow up his Invincibles generation, and Alex Song was snapped up by Arsenal. Initially joining on loan at the beginning of the 2005-2006 season, he was later purchased by Arsenal at the end of the season for just £1 million. While he would largely be a peripheral figure within Wenger's squad for a few years, he showed his quality when given a chance. Those would be few and far between in his first few, but it made sense. Remember, Arsenal was still a top side in Europe at this time, they made the Champions League final in the 05-06 season, and Song had just turned 18 upon joining them. During the 2008-2009 campaign, he began to rack up appearances, becoming an important player for Wenger that would operate primarily as a defensive midfielder, but would at times be shifted to centre-back positions if Wenger was desperate and even played at right-back. 08-09 would be his breakout year at the club, though the 2010-11 seasons and 11-12 seasons would show that he had so much more to offer when it came to going forward. Song, as mentioned, was typically utilized as a defensive midfielder, but he began to exhibit his ability to play a beautiful pass and dictate the tempo of the game during the 2010-11 campaign. Funnily enough, the final season for Fabregas. Perhaps he knew that this would be the Spaniards' final season in Arsenal and that there would be a role to be filled within the squad. This led to the fantastic performances of the 2011-12 season, in which Song went from a player who would clean up play and make the pass before the assist to the player that was playing 
deadly final balls, often in crucial moments. Both Van Persie and Song left in the same summer, as mentioned in the intro, and they had linked up for some crucial goals as well, late winners against Everton and Liverpool in particular. He also set up that Thierry Henry goal upon his second debut for the club, and 11 other goals that season as his numbers exploded. Previously, his maximum was nine goal involvements in a season, but especially when deployed alongside Mikel Arteta, it felt as though Song could blossom into a dominant creative engine in Arsenal's midfield who would pull the strings from a deeper position and give Arsenal the key they needed to unlock low blocks and spring counters. He was the guy that was supposed to grow into their main man in the midfield. But just like that, seemingly out of nowhere, he was sold to FC Barcelona for just 19 million euros or 50 million pounds at the time, much below his market value. At the time of signing for Barcelona, Song had nothing but praise for the club, as well as an eye on picking up something he never touched at Arsenal. Quote, I want to win it all. Barcelona is a winning team. They always win titles, and you want to be a part of that. I have not won anything, so this is a great opportunity for me. So I hope we keep winning, and at the end of the season, we lift as many titles as we can. I like everything about the club. We all like their style of play, and now I have the opportunity to be here with them, and I will do my best. However, years later, we would actually learn the truth of why Song left Arsenal, and it turns out winning silverware was just a small piece, according to Song. But more on what mostly motivated the move a little later. As for his time with the Catalan club, it was always going to be an incredibly difficult proposition to break into the team. Incredibly difficult, as he had Busquets ahead of him in the defensive midfield position. You're not moving that guy. In the eight or other parts of the midfield, he had the likes of Xavi, Iniesta, Fabregas, and Thiago Alcantara to compete with in that first season in Barcelona. Light work, right? This, in part, is one of the reasons as to why Alex Song didn't impose himself at Barcelona. In hindsight, it's as clear as day as to why he wasn't playing ahead of the others. I mean, even at that time, it was fairly obvious as to why he wasn't dislodging any of them. All of them, legends of the game in general, of the club, or just outright ballers who were close to the peak of their powers at that moment in their career. For that reason, Song's playing time was fairly limited, something he knew would happen from the get-go. But again, we'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> Clearly, I can't wait to get to that part. He was largely used as a rotation player in the midfield, and at other times, he was given minutes by shifting him into the back line to play as a center back, as Carlos Puyol was in the twilight of his career, often out injured, and so backup partners to Pique and Mascherano were required. Song essentially was a player who would fill the gaps as needed for Tito Villanova, and for Barcelona in general. They had yet another successful season. From match day one through match day 38, they didn't lose hold of first first place throughout. It was a dominant season, a continuation of Pep's dominance over the country, and if not for two semi-finals collapses in both the Copa del Rey and the Champions League, perhaps it could have been a legendary season for them. Regardless, Song got what he wanted out of that season, silverware. Again, until this point in his career, he hadn't won anything. He came right after the Invincibles and left right before Arsenal made a habit of winning the FA Cup. He didn't win anything. He was in that dark period. So, a La Liga trophy and a Supercopa de España were all that he won at Barcelona, and I know what you may be thinking if you're unfamiliar with his trajectory from here. Hey, didn't Barcelona go on to win more in the coming years? Yes, they did, and Song wasn't there to be a part of it. In his second season, that being the 2013-14 season, Tata Martino took the reins from Tito Villanova, who had of course fallen ill and would tragically pass due to cancer just under a year later. Under Martino, things didn't go great for Barcelona, at least by their standards. And for Song, while his first season saw his time limited, his second season, he barely played by comparison, featuring for about 700 minutes less than his debut season. He wasn't forced into playing as a center back, nor was he forced into any other new positions. He was playing where he wanted, as a defensive midfielder or just off of the defensive midfielder as an eight. Given his limited use and the money that was being spent on him, 
Barcelona elected to send him on two loan spells to West Ham, where again, Song failed to make a huge mark even though he was back in London and back in the Premier League. His first season went quite well, at least the first half of it, as he wasn't back to his best per se, but he was at least operating at a much higher level for West Ham than he did for Barcelona. It seemed as though his move would be made permanent, but with Song spending much of his second season injured, neither West Ham nor Barcelona were interested in paying for his services. So, out of contract, away he went to Ruben Kazan, a team willing to pay high, high, high wages, but again, things didn't work out, with stories of Song living at the training ground after plenty of unkept promises from the Russian side, including dropping him to the reserves and not paying his wages. That was illegal, mind you, and he did get his money. 7.6 million pounds in wages awarded to him after FIFA intervened. Eventually, he went to FC Sion in Switzerland, but during the COVID-19 pandemic, he was one of nine players that was sacked by the club for refusing to take a pay cut. Lots of talk of money here, and this is where it gets interesting, I guess. With Song moving to play in Djibouti, where of course he was a star, he saw out the rest of his career, which came to an end just this month. However, in 2020, he spoke on Instagram with... Pascal Siakam. <laughs> NBA fans didn't expect a spicy pee appearance in this video, did you? But the conversation they had is central to this entire video. Why? Well, back when Song was in London with Arsenal, he was living far beyond his means, he said. He had many payments to cover from his car to his home to his lifestyle, and he didn't have the means to do so. And so, let's get to the conversation. As Song said to Siakam, quote, I was at Arsenal for eight years, but only began to earn a good living in the last four. That was because my salary went up a lot, but also because I came to realize what a waster I was. During my entire time at Arsenal, I couldn't even save £100,000, while people thought I must be a millionaire. When Barcelona offered me a contract and I saw how much I would earn, I didn't think twice. I felt my wife and children should have comfortable lives once my career is over. I met Barca's sporting director and he told me I would not get to play many games, but I didn't give a f I knew that now I would become a millionaire. So you can understand where the title of this video came from. It doesn't seem so harsh now, does it? On top of that, reports began to leak out of Arsenal back in 2012 that Song was becoming a distraction at the club. One writer, John Cross of The Mirror, wrote, But the truth behind the Cameroon star's departure is that the club decided to sell after he continually turned up late for training, was seen as being lazy, drove the coaching staff to distraction, and lacked defensive discipline. Now, whether this is true or not, I cannot say for sure. Not many people can besides those directly involved. However, clubs basically unofficially release information to the media to try to control narratives. They brief the media. I say unofficially because it isn't conducted through a press release or a press conference. They tell some insider journalists about something in order to help the club look good while never officially going on the record with it. With how the rest of his career played out, those words could have been true, or perhaps it really was all just about the money and this briefing to the media was used to make Arsene Wenger look better, who was under a ton of scrutiny for letting Van Persie and Song go in the same window. But again, like I said in the intro of this video, while he did seemingly prioritize money over football for the majority of his professional career, at least Alex Song was using the money for good. Some of it, at least. Yes, some of it was spent on cars and a mortgage in London, of course he did. But once he started making big money at Barcelona and later at Ruben Kazan, he utilized some of the funds for housing projects back in Cameroon, as well as helping out with United Nations humanitarian efforts to instill the importance of hope and education in children across Central Africa. Another reason to not judge, we often cast judgments on players who opt for money instead of football excellence. I'm guilty of this at times too, as my greedy football brain wants to be entertained by top players all the time. But for someone like Song, and this is something you see all the time with players around the world, but for someone who grew up in poverty or not so affluent conditions, or someone who grew up in Song's situation where his dad passed at a young age, he had to look after his six siblings. When you have access to millions, you take the opportunity. Looking out for your family is number one, and then once that's sorted, the community comes next. So while it's disappointing from our greedy little footy fan brains perspective, it's understandable from songs. But still, I can't help but think of just how good he could have been if he continued at Arsenal, just how dominant he could have been in the midfield once he had reached his prime. 
Thanks as always for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe if you want more from Rabona TV and have a great day. Peace. Thank you.